Let's get the Monopoly board out and move to Whitehall and Pentonville Road. Whitehall. The pavements of power. The political pull movement that in so many is... Corrupt! And Pentonville Road. Famous for its pit of a prison. A.K.A. The Push-Up Palace. Development observations have them pulling towards first and then pushing away second, but I'm gonna handle push and pull like a team. But they're like Laurel and Hardy, Starsky and Hutch, Briggs and Murtaugh. But any trained psychologist will tell you Mel Gibson's breakdown was because he wasn't hanging around with Danny Glover enough. Hey, he lost his mind after weapon four, that's all I'm saying. Just a thought, kids in schools do press-ups, a push movement, but where's the opposite of that movement? A pull movement. You see, Horizontal bodyweight pulls require equipment, and that's why they don't get done. But besides this, it's a lot more difficult to keep them in balance because we live in an anterior world. Madonna sang about it. We live in an anterior world, and I am an anterior girl, you know it! Pretty much everything is in front of you. Keyboards, cupboards, driving, gardening, hoovering. Rucksacks turn on the anterior chain. People sleep on their fronts, and you don't spend a lot of time looking at the back of you, so you're setting up a dominance in the push muscles. And what's the effect of all this front input? Well, it shifts the glenohumeral joint forward. You want the balls to be in the middle of the sockets. You want the guide ropes to be even all around. If there's too much tension in any one direction, it pulls it there, like a tent, and that causes forward shoulders. Take something as natural as running. If you've got those T-Rex arms, you're not driving the elbows back. Now, the repetitive forward swinging changes the posture, hunching you. Now, I can't go through every sport, but let's just say, unless you're a rower or a windsurfer, you're probably going to have an inbuilt dominance to push over pull. And how sports people try to rectify this? With bodybuilding movements. And has it worked? Mm, not so much. Why? Because bodybuilders have just as many shoulder issues. That's like hiding from Freddy Krueger in Jason's house. Either way, you're going to get chopped. Now you'd think that bodybuilding would ensure that you don't have an imbalance. Wrong. In the 50s and 60s, bodybuilding focused on muscle balance. Now you take all the muscles and you expand them in the same ratios and focus on athletic movements. But over time, two other mutant camps emerged. The largest muscles possible, all over, and the average guy wanted spot increases, buffing and puffing up the bits on display. Total balance gave way to pimping your ride, and certain areas rose in prominence like chested arms. Gyms noticed that dust never settles on the chest press, and so they hoarded it in multiples, and Mondays were rebranded International Chest Day. But the pool machines? They needed a weekly clean. I think they've got an application pending for a bank holiday in February, but it doesn't look good. Now, can powerlifting with its three main movements help balance push and pull? <laughs> not likely. The push pattern bench is always going to overtake the row because you're not being judged on it, hence the accessory work. And this may be a part of the reason why so many top deadlifters find it biomechanically advantageous to pull with a bend in the thoracic spine. They've built in a push dominance which defaults to that posture at maximum weight, but this makes it really difficult and painful for the shoulders to get into a good squat position. And the more you chase the big three, the quicker you arrive at injury. So, do Olympic lifts, which are pull dominant, keep your balance? <laughs> no chance. Compound movements don't correct your setup, they exploit it. That's why all those compound junkies at CrossFit are all mummified in kinesio tape. And once you're injured, no matter how you did it, you go physio. And they've got their own exercises, which tend to be body weight progressing to cans of beans and therabands. Now these help to a point, but in my experience, it's like hitchhiking from the hospital. They help you get away from being truly incapacitated, but they then tend to dump you and leave you in the middle of nowhere to fend for yourself. On the spectrum of shoulder function, there's a gap. So how'd you fill it? The biggest secret and most underused fact about weights is that you can use it to recorrect the imbalances caused by the activities that you do. So whoever you are and whatever you do, from ironing to firing, from sinking pints to going on hikes, 
Weights is there to undo what you've done doing those. But these disciplines require good shoulder function. They don't ensure good shoulder function. So I say, go back to two simple words, push and pull with weights to work as a joint integrity system. Now I know that the functional strength crew have glommed specific exercises like face pulls and rear delt flies, but that's because bodybuilding has still largely defined the language of weights. Powerlifting and bodybuilding share terms. When we think of weights exercises, with a few exceptions, we're talking about bodybuilding terms, but lists of exercises don't ensure balance. So let's clear the clutter. Firstly, what does a shoulder joint actually do? It does flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal and external rotation. So why don't we just load up these basic movements and be done with it? Well, first, gravity messes up a few of the movements. But secondly, and more important, there's a difference between how the joint can move and the usual function of the joint. Now, one large factor of joint movement is muscle balance. If the muscles are out of balance, then that's going to mean the joint is going to be restricted in movement. But balance isn't aesthetic, it's numeric. It's not how it looks, it's how much work it can do. And that's why bodybuilding doesn't help. The usual function of the joint is push and pull. And out of those two, I think we're designed to do more pull than push. And here's my theory. Repeated tests in the 60s on tree swinging apes found that pound for pound, chimps had as much as twice the strength of humans when it came to pulling weights. Now their dominant movement is pulling, not pushing. I mean, they don't do press ups. <sighs> Power of the internet, don't do your fingertips. But they've managed to pull up to 572 kilos two-handed and up to 385 kilos one-handed. Now, compare that to some big lads who can only pull about 227 kilos two-handed. Now, figures vary in subsequent tests, and apes have different recruitment abilities, true. But when pulling has gone from this to this, your shoulders are going to feel it. But without the jungle, your best friend is the cable machine, because it allows you to hit all the angles and defy gravity. So here is Aesop's ape-inspired push and pull. One. The setup for push or pull is scapular attraction. There's a whole load of muscles that contract and isometrically protect the thoracic spine so you can do both your push and your pull movements. That's right, even when you do your bench, you need to be working as hard with your back pulling as you do with your front pushing. Two, push and pull is everything from bottom to top, from vertical to horizontal to vertical. Three, Keep the weight equal front to back, left to right, by doing the weakest first. Four, use two arm, one arm to the side, and one arm facing forward to take care of all the planes. Five, use all the attachments that you can. Six, there are ratios front to back, left to right. Keep the simple ratio correct of one to one. Don't chase the stack. Seven, for staying alive, I like five, five, five. That's five left, five right, five both. Change height, repeat. Now you can do a lot of volume in a short time and really ingrain correct push and pull mechanics. There's obviously a lot more here, but this is enough to get you going. Just remember, there is no one right exercise. Variety is the key to teaching your body about all the different push and pull scenarios at all the different angles. But there is a golden rule. It's crap if you don't retract the scab. Okay, so next stop on the board is flex and twist. So now we're getting into low back problems. So watch out for that. Retract the scabs and push the like button. Chat away in the comments, babe. And if you like my vibe, please subscribe. Woo! Woo!